Hello everyone, back to you in day second video, doing Gaz Rubbish Sunday Roundup for day second video. So this is your Sunday afternoon eclectic mix of this. And now we're going to look at things like solar activity, sea surface temperature, anomalies, Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation and weather for the next uh, week, 10 days as well. We've got the Bayesian Climate Centre in uh, now from last month. So when we did the um, third and final seasonal model roundup for the summer of, uh, of 2019, at the end of uh, May, uh, we were short of the Bayesian Climate Centre. It hadn't updated for May. That update has come through now. So I'll bring you up to date with what the Bayesian Climate Centre is forecasting for this summer, or was forecasting for this summer last month. I'll bring you up to date with that uh, at the end of the video. Uh, the autumn analogues are underway. So the first autumn analogues update uh, has been released at Gaswell. This is here on my own page. And uh, later on today, that video is going to be placed on the autumn updates and forecast page. There'll be a written uh, summary that goes out as well. So you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to read that and watch the video on demand. Later on this afternoon, we're going to have a, a little written update uh, for Glastonbury Festival. So that's um, still short of a GFS time frame, but it is getting ever closer. And it's going to be a video for Download uh, Festival and also Isle of Wight Festival coming up at Gazov is later on uh, day as well. So all of the event stuff is underway. We started the Le Mans updates yesterday as well. So um, the summer event season well and truly underway now at uh, Gazov is. Right, let's go on with Sunday Round. We're going to start off uh, uh, with sea surface temperature anomalies. So this is how things were looking with the sea surface temperature anomalies uh, last week. We did last week's uh, Sunday round. We've got three areas that were interesting. We've got the Enso region uh, just there. That's uh, the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, of course, from uh, Peru over here to Indonesia over here. We've got the Northern Pacific up here. And then we've got the Northern Atlantic Ocean. Uh, round there. So that's how things were looking when we did last week's Sunday roundup. Let's show you the very latest. So that's how things are looking uh, now, or uh, was looking on the 30th of uh, May. So uh, dealing with the Enso region first of all, uh, so very little change actually in the Enso region over the uh, past week. We still have this weak signature for El Nino uh, continuing. So if I go back to last week and then go forwards to uh, this week, you can see that very little change really. Maybe a slight warming actually through this central part of the Ecuador Pacific Ocean. I'll explain the reason for that in a moment, but possibly has slightly warmed over the past week. But basically we're still somewhere between sort of weak El Nino and Enso neutral on that sort of borderline on that threshold between uh, Nino and uh, Neutral on the warm side. In the Northern Pacific Ocean, again, all looking rather stable uh, up there. So that's how things looking in the North Pacific uh, last week. That's how things looking now. Maybe getting a bit colder uh, around here. So um, that might be signs that the Northern Pacific is going to go uh, colder in the next few weeks and months. We may be going to see this area becoming uh, colder. because we have had a lot of warm sea surface temperature anomalies around here in the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean. It's normally quite a cold place, but since around 2014, uh, something like that, 2014, 2015, uh, it's been quite warm up there. So possibly all these cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies gathering around here. Possibly that's the first indication that things might be going a bit colder in the North Pacific. In the Atlantic Ocean, so again, that's how things looked last week. It's how things are looking uh, this week, so we can see that it's uh, relatively warm through the tropical Atlantic through here. Cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies uh, sort of uh, around Newfoundland and that kind of area. And then close to the UK, going up towards uh, Green. It's actually getting a, getting a little bit warmer uh, up there. So uh, tropical Atlantic, of course, that's going to be important over the next few weeks and months. If this area does stay uh, quite warm, then we might start to see some tropical storms and hurricanes uh, ramping up as we go further into the summer and then on into the autumn. Generally, the oceans are looking very, very stable. They're uh, not changing all that much over the uh, over the past few weeks. It hasn't changed all that much over the past few weeks. One change that has taken place is that things are becoming quite cold up here in the Norwegian Sea. That's a bit of a change over the past few years because it tended to be quite warm up there. But at the moment, the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Nor Norwegian Sea are looking quite chilly. Still looking pretty cold through the Mediterranean as well and evening to the Bay of Biscay, but 
those are all shallow water so as soon as it starts getting hot uh, they're going to respond to the temperature and uh, they'll start lifting up quite a bit so that's how the oceans are looking as far as the southern oscillation index is looking, which sort of reflected uh reflective in terms of the atmospheric state to end so this is the very latest from uh queensland government that's part of bureau of meteorology in australia so this is measuring the atmospheric pressures between darwin in northern australia and tahiti in the southern ocean when the soi is negative then the atmospheric setup is going to be reflective of el nino when the soi is positive then the atmospheric setup um, will be reflective of La Nina, of a cold event. Uh, that red line just there is the 30-day average for the SOI. You see that's been trending downwards over the uh, over past uh, week or so since the end of May and into the beginning of June. So obviously the SOI has gone and undergone a more negative phase. And we see this confirmed by these numbers. These are provisional, but they don't tend to change uh, that much. So for example, 25th of May sees the SOI at minus 12. Uh, 26th of May sees the SOI at minus, at minus 19. 27th of May sees the SOI at minus 18. Uh, 24th of May there, minus 22. So I have, have some very negative numbers uh, going into the final stages of uh, May. And that's telling us that the atmospheric setup has been reflective of uh, El Nino down there in the Southern Pacific Ocean. That's probably what's caused that slight warming of the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean over the past uh, week, the fact that the atmosphere has kind of like been driving the ocean into more of a uh, El Nino type setup. Very latest numbers for the 1st and 2nd of June, because they're ahead of us in Australia, so they've already got the number in for the 2nd of June. Comes out at uh, minus 7 for the 1st and minus 2 for the 2nd. Uh, so not quite as negative with the SOI as we go into the beginning of uh, June, but still slightly on the side of uh, El Nino anyway. Solar activity, so this is how the uh, solar disk is looking on our side of this today from solarham.net. I've uh, got a spotless sun, so uh, therefore uh, solar activity is at very low levels. Solarham is reporting that uh, solar activity is expected to remain at very low levels for the next uh, three days. I've uh, got an entirely spotless sun at the moment. Which you expect because we're very close to solar beam. This is the Gazovis Sunday Roundup activity, solar activity tracker, updated to the 1st of June by our good friend James Ackwell. Big thank you, James, for updating this. So the uh, orange line here depicting each individual day's worth of sunspot numbers. Uh, you can see that uh, we're going through quite an extended run of spotless. Uh, of spotlessness at the moment from around the 19th of May uh, just there up to where we are right now 1st of June uh, we're basically spotless uh, throughout that period so uh, we are going through uh, quite an extended run of spotless conditions once again haven't had such a long run I don't think for a little while uh, the thick green and thick red lines they are our trend lines they haven't yet trended down to the floor of the chart but if this run of spotlessness goes on much longer we will probably see those trend lines moving down to the floor such as uh, we have there back in February and through to March such as we saw uh, from February through to March. We're at very, very weak levels of solar activity. Solar minimum is expected to occur at some point within the next sort of year. Uh, so uh, it might be as short as around six months, could be as long as around 12 months. Uh, at some point through the next few months, we are going to reach solar minimum and then go on into uh, solar cycle number 25, the new solar cycle, of course. Um, reason we look at this is that there is a weak connection, or there is a connection between uh, weak levels of uh, solar activity and also an increased risk of normal blocking, particularly in the winter. So when you're around or just after solar minimum, you do increase the chance of, uh, of uh, colder winters, more blocked winters, particularly uh, for the UK and uh, for Europe. It's not a guarantee of anything. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to get uh, cold winters for any particular winter because each winter is unique uh, to itself. But it does kind of like load the dice a little bit in favour 
of a colder uh, winter when you're around or just after soda mineral. We shall keep an eye on the uh, solar activity tracker and big thanks to James for sending that through. This is how the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart is uh, looking at the moment. So the black line tells where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Similar to the SOI, this is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It's not driving anything in its own terms. It just tells you what the atmosphere is doing in the Arctic. So when the AO is positive, you're going to have low pressure up over the Arctic, up over North Pole. When the AO is negative, you're going to have high pressure blocking up over the North Pole. Now you see that uh, going back into February and March, we was very positive with the Arctic Oscillation, but things changed in early April. We went negative with the AO, and we pretty much stayed negative uh, right way through to where we are right now, which is just there. We did get a small bump uh, or a small increase into um, positivity around the middle part of April, but it didn't last long very quickly. We went back into negative AO conditions again. Uh, May has been entirely negative throughout the whole of May, except just those couple of days there when we went up towards uh, neutral. So they've had a lot of blocking over the sort of Greenland North Pole region, obviously through the course of, uh, of May. That's where we are right now. We're still on the uh, negative side of neutral, so uh, negative AO condition continuing into the beginning of June. GFS Ensemble is actually forecasting the AO to go more negative, would you believe, through the early part of June, the first week of June. Uh, but after that, going into the second week of June, up to the middle of the month, possibly just hit, uh, just hints that we might start to see the AO begin to recover to a, a slightly more positive uh, phase. Um, because that's a long way off, it's extended range stuff. So certainly within the next week to 10 days, we're keeping the AO um, negative. And then maybe science it's trying to get itself back towards neutral as you get towards the middle part of June. But that's a really, really uh, long way off. So certainly for the next week to 10 days, we're going to keep appreciable levels of high pressure and blocking uh, over North Pole, you would have thought. This is how the North Atlantic Oscillation is looking. So the Arctic Oscillation measuring atmospheric pressures in the North Pole, in the Arctic. North Atlantic Oscillation measure, measuring uh, atmospheric pressures in the North Atlantic. Again, black line shows where we've been with the with the LEO. Uh, red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NEO to go. So, uh, same as with the Arctic Oscillation, the North Atlantic Oscillation went into its uh, negative phase through the early part of April, uh, went briefly positive there into the, around the middle part of April, around the third week of April, then back to negative again. We've been negative with the uh, NEO right way through the whole of May. So, both of those I indexes, the AO and the NEO, have been negative through May. Where we are right now is still negative, and you've guessed it, the GFS ensembles are forecasting that the NEO is going to stay negative for the next couple of weeks. There's no real sign of uh, any sort of positivity of the NEO within the next couple of weeks. One or two of these ensemble members in the extended range are sort of lifting up onto uh, the positive side, but they're just outliers, and they are kind of like over uh, 10 days away. So obviously they're very un in very much in the unreliable time frame. So I think even more strongly than the AO, the uh, NAO is very much set to, uh, into negative territory through the first half of uh, June. Can't really see much sign uh, of that changing. So uh, this is telling us that we're probably going to keep um, sort of appreciable levels of high pressure around Iceland and lower pressure down towards the Azores. Uh, and in summer, that is usually going to be quite a cool and unsettled signal, uh, actually. Although there are occasions when um, you can get uh, sort of hot weather out of a negative AO-NAO combination. But generally, at this time of year, you're going to be generally quite unsettled and relatively cool uh, with this kind of setup. So it probably tells us that, but certainly the first half of June anyway, which we know already is going to be sort of dominated by cool and showery type conditions. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble. So we're looking at Wigan. Someone's asked me to have a look at Wigan uh, with uh, this part of the video. If you'd like to have your local town or city featured in this part of the video, let me know through the comments and we're always happy to uh, show your local town or city um, 
for this part of the for this part of the video. Looking at Wigan anyway today. So red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Wigan. We're starting off pretty warm today, but temperatures are on the slide. By tomorrow, we'll be feeling a lot cooler and fresher across the country. And of course, dates on the bottom of the charts. So you can see it as we go up towards around the 10th of June, so right way through to uh, through to there, we're generally keeping the upper air temperatures quite cool. So the coming few days is going to be pretty chilly. Going in towards the uh, second week of June, and then up to the middle part of the month, we do see a warming trend. This has been evident with the GFS ensembles for a couple of days uh, now. So as we go towards the middle of June, we might start to see the weather becoming much warmer, maybe even hotter. There are a few hot outlier members that we have here. Um, so it remains to be seen how warm it gets as we go into the middle of June. But certainly from like the first week to 10 days, it does look as though the middle uh, week to 10 days of June could well start to turn quite a bit uh, warmer. That is extended rain stuff though. So obviously how warning with that, it's unreliable. Within the reliable time frame, which is like the week to 10 day time frame, it actually looks quite cool. And precipitation wise, uh, rainfall spikes are increasing. So quite a, quite a bit of dry weather for the next uh, couple of days. But uh, from around Tuesday onwards, it looks like we're going into a more unsettled phase. Uh, showers or longer spells of rain coming up with regular uh, precipitation spikes uh, there. So quite unsettled, cool um, generally until around the middle of the month when it might begin to get a bit warmer. Temperature anomalies from the 2nd to the 10th of June, overall a little bit below average for the UK and for Ireland. So uh, quite a cool week coming up. Precipitation anomalies a bit above average, so cool and wet actually, or uh, cool and showery anyway, uh, from the 2nd through to the 10th of June. Doesn't look particularly inspiring. Uh, that's how the GFS operational run is looking for Wednesday. Low pressure across the country, or trough, anyway, within the 500 millibar flow so uh, quite showery uh, on Wednesday the showery condition continue into the second half of the week up to next weekend a new area of low pressure starts to move in from the southwest that could bring more general outbreaks of rain into the country uh, next weekend heading up towards day 10 stays quite unsettled but we do start to get a bit of a build of pressure to our south and east so a ridge has extended in from the Azores high into France so moving into Germany still not sunset out to the northwest so shells along the spells of rain the Scotland and Northern Ireland by day 10 which is the 12th of June but for England and Wales turning drier and uh, warmer then uh, and as going to more extended range we start to see high pressure beginning to get more influential so again this is just uh, the idea that heading towards the middle part of month it starts to turn drier and a lot warmer maybe and hotter uh, there with uh, high pressure sort of back in control although there are still some sort of little flabby troughs um, knocking around so there might still be some showers even up to the middle part of June but overall that looks a lot drier and a lot warmer, I wouldn't even say hotter, as we're going into the middle of June uh, with the GFS operational run. GFS parallel run looks like that, rather cool and showery on uh, Wednesday. We keep things showery into the second half of the week as well. And then next weekend, here comes that next area of low pressure from the southwest. That could bring a soaking into uh, next weekend. It's a little way off, so uh, we'll have to monitor that low, see what it does. But it might bring some uh, quite heavy rain in around a week's time. Beyond that, again, we start to get this ridge building in from the Azores high. So by the time we get through today, 10, Wednesday, 12th of June, all changed. We're under a ridge of high pressure then, turning drier and uh, quite a lot warmer under that ridge. Uh, starting to pull in some quite hot air from the south then as we go up to Thursday, 13th of June. This is just beyond day 10, uh, so it's unreliable. Uh, but it is turning a lot hotter there as we're moving into the middle part of June. Although quite quickly going thundery. So by Sunday the 16th of June, we're starting to get a thundery low moving up from the south. That's a classic sort of plume type situation. Uh, and we finish up with GFS parallel run back to cooler, fresher, and a little bit more showery conditions from uh, the northwest up to the 18th of June. There's definitely the, the suggestion still within the GFS output of uh, something quite a lot hotter occurring, maybe only briefly, but something quite a lot hotter occurring through the middle part of June. 
ECMWF again, quite showery conditions on Wednesday, and we keep these showery conditions going into the end of the week. There's a little area of low pressure there down to the southeast for Saturday. And uh, that could bring some wet weather into southern and eastern parts of the country to start next weekend. Uh, that low pressure then uh, drifts northwards in towards the North Sea by the time you get through to Sunday. So cool and showery next weekend. And then head up towards day 10. High pressure having a go at building in from the Atlantic. But this time it's staying just to our west. So that does settle things down quite a bit. Although northern and eastern parts could still be a bit on the showery side. But it's not particularly warm. The uh, wind direction coming around that area of high pressure is going to be in that sort of direction. So the wind wind direction is sort of uh, northwesterly. So not particularly hot with the ECM run at day 10. But it is having a go at building in uh, some high pressure. So again, the idea is there that heading up towards the middle part of June, High pressure begins to become more influential, though where it's going to sit and how much warmth it brings us, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But probably settling down for a while anyway through the middle part of June. CFS is looking like this, so these are 500 millibar heights break it down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 2nd to the 8th of June. Uh, so the coming week looks quite unsettled. A trough of low pressure is close to the country. So just rather uh, showery and quite cool conditions really to start us off. Uh, week 2 is the 9th to the 15th of June, below average heights just out to our west, above average heights to our south and east. Still also a bit unsettled, but uh, gradually pressure is rising there. So certainly for more southern eastern parts of the country, it would be, it would be starting to turn drier and warmer. But out to the north and west, probably still quite uh, showery. Week 3 is the 16th to 22nd of June with a trough of low pressure over top of the country. The above average heights are receding back into northeastern parts of Europe and uh, the Baltic Sea, that sort of area. So um, that just looks rather unsettled, actually. Maybe a bit surprisingly so, but there we go. Week 3 looks rather cool and unsettled. Uh, and then we go through to week 4 and the high pressure comes back again. So the high pressure returns to Scandinavia. Winds are going into the east. That would be taking us from the 23rd to 29th of June into something uh, a lot uh, a lot warmer. The wind would be sort of east southeasterly, and uh, yeah, that looks uh, looks like a, a much warmer end to June potentially. Um, probably watch out for thunder because there is a trough of low pressure to the south, so I suppose that could push northwards up up through Biscay and France, maybe bring risk of something thundery. But uh, so that week week four uh, does look a lot drier and a lot warmer with CFS V2. Before we go, I just want to show you the Beijing Climate Centre. So, as I say, uh, last month when we did the third and final seasonal model roundup for the summer of 2019, got all long range models together, but we didn't have the Beijing Climate Centre May update. They've updated it late and it has come through now. So, last month, this is what the Beijing Climate Centre was forecasting for the uh, summer of uh, 2019, it was going for an area of above average heights to be over top of the country, generally an anomalous area of high pressure over country, jet stream pushed northwards. This would be an anticyclonic signal for the summer of 2019. So the Bay Climate Centre was still forecasting a high pressure dominated summer. It was forecasting a warmer than average summer too. Temperature anomalies uh, above average, not just of the UK, but through most parts of uh, Europe as well, a warm summer being forecast and also a very dry summer forecast. So uh, this uh, is the precipitation anomaly for the summer of 2019 from the Beijing Climate Centre last month, remember. Uh, and again, it was going for a significantly drier than average uh, summer. How that works out in terms of the month by month uh, breaks breakdowns is like this. So June was being forecast to have above average heights to our southwest, uh, below average heights up to the north. So a bit westerly, maybe a little bit showery for northern and western parts of the country, drier and warmer perhaps down to the south. 
Uh, July was being forecast to be like that, with above average heights, kind of like in the middle of the Atlantic. That might not be quite so good for July, actually. Uh, you could get a little bit of a trough within the 500 mm flow, but it's certainly a trough in towards um, Western Russia there, over this side of the chart. Doesn't back as far as uh, sort of Scandinavia and West of Europe, but because of the centre of that ridge, kind of like to the south of Greenland, uh, I think there might be a bit of a trough in the 500 mm flow. So July could be a rather cooler and more showery type month. But then August, look at this. For August, it builds in that area of above average heights right over the top of the country. That would be a hot August. Uh, hot August there, forecast by the Beijing Climate Centre. It will send the jet stream well to the north. The high pressure is over the top of the UK, right over top of us, actually. So um, that will bring us out with a very, very dry and hot month uh, for August, which, of course, would be in line with Gazzavi's uh, summer forecast, where we've gone for, the, for August to be potentially the warmest August since 2003. So it was a bold forecast and uh, neck on the block with that one. <laughs> so we'll see how it pans out. But I've got a bit of support anyway from uh, the Beige Climate Centre on that idea. So uh, that's brought you up to date what Beige Climate Centre was showing. I told you that as soon as that updated, I will I will bring it to you. And uh, there you go. So you've seen what the Beige Climate Centre was forecasting uh, last month for the summer of 2019. Overall, a pretty decent summer, particularly good. Uh, if you like hot and dry weather, anyway, particularly good in August. Right, that's it, guys. We've set round up uh, for today. Uh, don't forget, check out the autumn analogues. We'll be back a little bit later on with a short written post for Glastonbury and uh, also a little video for download and the Isle of Wight festival. All of the events, festivals, and uh, all of that kind of thing are you know, getting going now at uh, Gazwebbies for this summer. So if you've got any interest in those events, then uh, check back later on this afternoon. Right, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.